but it almost made me second guess myself. Oh, I aced that test. No, I didn't. Oh, she's just pushing me and she's like, fix your stuff. So this is just like pro status. Especially being the first observation, the beginning of the year. Duh, you know? Hey guys, what's up? Happy Thursday. Yesterday, I ended up calling in sick because my cold was just, I had chills and body aches. So I had to write up sub plans and then I knew I had an observation today. So I was afraid of like, if I already felt that bad on Tuesday, if I come in on Wednesday and push myself, then Thursday for my observation, I'm probably gonna be worse. And it is the worst feeling doing an observation when you know that you didn't do your best. So I took yesterday off and I recouped and I do feel a little bit better. I feel like I have more energy and now just a runny nose rather than all the body aches. Anyway, so right now is lunchtime. It was a busy morning, so I didn't have time to pick you guys up. But first thing in the morning, I read through everything my sub did, what they didn't do so we can get to it today, how they did, and thank goodness my kids did awesome. So really happy about that. I told them I'll probably bring them a little prize tomorrow and we'll have a fun Friday. So today, pretty much first thing in the morning, I had an observation and I wanted to do character, setting, and sequence of the plot. So this is my lesson plan that I have today. I had to send this to my principal and then I have it out to also help me out. It goes over pretty much an I do, we do, you do format with check for understandings in between and of course restating the objective. My expectation for this was to have students and teacher use complete sentences. The new words will be added to our grammar wall after instruction. So that's my grammar wall that we need to add the words to. Students will be completing all four learning domains, reading, writing, listening, and speaking. And our objective is students will be able to identify the character, setting, and the sequence of the plot. So we came in and read Yoon and the Jade Bracelet. Really interesting story. Talking about traditions, which is our main focus this week. And then I moved on to my slideshow the characters, setting, and the plot sequence. And this just broke down. This was the I do, so this is me actually teaching it. We went over the objective, how, why it's important to ask ourselves questions when we read. I explained how last week we did main character, setting, and the plot, and what sequential order actually means. And this was my little example that I gave. I explained how we can't get dressed, go to school, and then wake up. Or we can't wake up, go to school, and then get dressed. The order is very important. We have to wake up, get dressed, and then go to school. It helps us better understand the story. So I said, today we're pulling it all together by doing the main character setting and plot in sequential order. Then I gave our quick tips on how to find these sequential order, saying that we need to ask ourselves three questions. What happens in the beginning, what happens in the middle, and what happens at the end? And down here is my little check for understanding reminder uh, reminding myself to ask the kids what the first question is, what the second question is, and what the third question is, and have them talk in pairs and stuff like that. Then I say, let's do it. We restate our objective. Then we moved on to this. So I made this just on Google Docs. So they have their name, the title of the book, address the main character, the setting, and then we talked about the beginning. So we asked yourself the first question, what happens at the beginning of the story? Then we move on to the middle, what happens in the middle of the story? And then we did those two together and the end one they did on their own. So I showed them how we can reference back to our book and how we can find examples and details in the story to help us support our evidence here. And so for the end one, they had to write it on their own. And they did pretty well. I feel like once we did the beginning and the middle, they kind of got, okay, this is how we're getting evidence. How it can't just be in, oh, in the beginning, they got a bracelet. It's like, no, in the beginning, she moved to America. She got a bracelet. What did she really want? She really wanted a jump rope. And then moving on to really giving the detail. And during the story, we really went into, okay, so what in the text shows us how they feel and that we need to include those words also in our writing. So after they finished their chart, they had to turn it over and they had to write about a time that they were tricked. And then I had a couple kids say, I've never been tricked. And I had one girl say that she'd never been tricked. And I said, write about a time that you trick someone because she's a little trickster. And then she just and laughed. So she's like, oh, okay. And then wrote a bunch. And then I had a couple others that realized that they hadn't been tricked, but they'd been doing a lot of tricking. And then I asked my kids, have your parents ever tricked you into cleaning your room? And they just busted up laughing. And then we talked about times that our parents have tricked us to cleaning our room. I said that my parents have definitely tricked me into cleaning my room. 
So we had a lot of fun stories after that. <laughs> and then the majority of them had something to write about. So I feel like my observation went really well. I feel confident in it. You do always forget something though. So of course I forgot my end slide, which explains why this is important and how we carry asking ourselves these questions when we're reading all the way through to when we're older and how it's going to help them in fourth grade and all of that. But that's not the worst slide that I could have forgotten. So. <laughs> So I still feel pretty confident in it. And it's just so crazy because my observations the last two years were so stressful. Like I felt worried after my lesson. I felt like, oh, like that was pretty good, but like, I don't know. But today it's like, I'm not that nervous for it. I feel like I'm gonna do pretty good. I feel like I did pretty good, but it almost made me second guess myself. Cause like in grade school, whenever I'd be like, oh, I aced that test. No, I didn't. So it's kind of like, is it one of those things again where I thought like I aced the test and I didn't? But overall, I really think I did good. I think with first grade, it was a lot of me kind of stressing out about the random unexpected behaviors that my classes were known to have. And this year, I don't really have that. I have some kids that I know are going to get distracted and sidetracked, but it was nothing major. Like, it's not like I had to worry about some kid stabbing another kid with a pencil because that happened my first year teaching during an observation. <laughs> so just a lot more stress-free and I think I'm a lot more just confident in what I'm teaching and how I'm teaching and my kids. So overall, I think I did great. I'm going to talk to my principal after school and we're gonna break everything down and talk about how I did. So I'm super excited to share that with you guys. So I didn't get to pick you up yesterday to go over my observation notes, but happy Friday. And today, I'm gonna go over them with you. So let's dive into it. So this is the rubric that our principals are looking at whenever they're doing our observation. And it goes over all of our standards. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have six standards that they're going over and then just typical rubric. We have the practice not consistent. So that means we really have to look at our teaching and see what big changes that I do need to make in order to make that consistent develop beginning practice or pretty much just beginning teacher and then maturing beginning teacher means okay we're starting to really push ourselves here and i see the substance and then practice or experience and then experience practice exemplifying the standard so this is just like pro status um Okay, so here's my observation. Sorry, I'm kind of being careful of where I hold this because this shows my school information and then this is my principal's writing in her notes. I feel like that's personal, so I'm not gonna share. So pretty much, I get majority of my checks in the developing or the maturing. And that's totally fine with where I'm at. I'm only year three and this year I completely switched grades. I switched principals. So getting observed by a totally new person is going to be a little bit different because even though it's a rubric like each teacher can have a slightly different expectation or view on something so i was really interested to see what my new principal would think of my observation so it was really nice to sit down with her and go over it so i had a couple of standards where majority of them were in the maturing side and then i have a couple where majority of them are on the developing side and that's okay also because i talked to her and we discussed how the developing part it's like i did it it's just Let's push, let's see how far we can take this. And I like it because she's challenging me. She has a high expectation for me and she praises me. She says I'm doing great. And so her pushing me is awesome. Like that's how us teachers should be. Even though we see our students doing well, we support them, but we're also pushing them. So I think it's great, but definitely good hearing her say that. So I'm not just telling myself like, oh, she's just pushing me. And she's like, fix your stuff, you know? So it's good that we talked about it. We're on the same page. For me, my standards, um, so I'll share with you a standard that I got all maturing in and then a standard that I got developing in and kind of discuss why I think that is. So for creating and maintaining effective environments for student learning, I got all maturing. So for this, I think this is something that I just always value so much and I take a lot of pride in my classroom environment. So I think this one comes a little more natural to me or I naturally put a lot more into it. Um, probably a combination of both. So, but it also feels really good to see that other people see that when they come into my classroom. Um, uh, 
So standard number four, planning instruction and designing learning experiences for all students. That's where I got all of them in the developing. This is like one specifically that she described, like I saw it, you did all of it, but let's push. So I take it as like, of course, planning instruction, designing learning experiences for all students like why wouldn't you try to like push that and grow that as much as you can possible? Like that's the most important part of school and learning. So I would be pretty shocked if I actually got maturing and all of those, you know, and especially being the first observation, the beginning of the year, duh, you know? So not surprised by it. In fact, I actually like, like this is kind of what tells me that she set the expectations pretty high because instruction and designing those learning experiences should be ever evolving. And we should always be trying to like grow. And as we understand our students, we understand how to change lessons and make them specifically for them. So that's what I think. Pretty much that's an overview of this. So if you like this video, please give me a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you next week. Bye.